Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsor. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather around the table of the Eucharist this Sunday, we ask our Lord Jesus Christ today, to wash our hearts, cleanse it from sin, so that we could live our lives according to the Word of God. And so, to prepare ourselves to receive God's graces and fullness in this Mass, let us first acknowledge our sinfulness and ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon Him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who lends not his money at usury, and accepts no bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be disturbed. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was uh, preparing for this homily, and as I was reading this Gospel passage, my attention was immediately caught by the reason of contention between the Pharisees and Jesus. And that is the washing of hands. Nakuha agad ang atensyon ko sapagkat yan ang ginagawa natin ngayon. No? Ang paghuhugas ng kamay. At yan ang kanilang pinagtalunan. And as I was looking at the gospel passage, we see that what they practiced during that time was also is also what we are practicing right now. For example, the Pharisees and the scribes gave importance to washing their hands before eating. And that is also what we are so obsessed right now, washing our hands, keeping them clean. Who among you would always have a bottle of alcohol beside them or in their pockets? You just held something, after that, you spray alcohol and, you know, immediately disinfect your hands. We are obsessed already with keeping our hands clean. And not only keeping our hands clean, 
But according to our gospel passage today, there are other practices that the Pharisees keep so that they could keep themselves clean and pure. For example, when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat at home without purifying themselves. Isn't this also what we are doing? When you come from outside, upon coming, going home, you first wash your whole body, purify first yourself, purify all the clothings that you have worn before you come inside the home. And also, there are traditions of purifying their cups, their jugs, their kettles, and their beds. Isn't this also what we are doing right now? We also purify anything that we use for eating. We make sure that everything that we touch are clean. Ngayong mga panahon na ito ay kung ano ang kanilang ginagawa noon, ay ganun din naman ang ginagawa natin. We are keeping everything clean. Sinisiguro nating malinis ang lahat, nahugasan ng ating mga kamay, malinis ang mga gagamitin natin. But Jesus invites us also to do something aside from keeping our hands clean, disinfecting all the things that we are using, Jesus invited the Pharisees and the scribes to do something. And that is to wash their hearts. We are already so... We have already become experts in disinfecting our hands. Every second of the day, I think, we are disinfecting our hands. Every movement that we do, we make sure that everything is purified and disinfected. But Jesus invites us to do something today. Can we not also wash, purify our hearts? To look deeper, not only from outside, of purifying our body, of cleansing our hands, but Jesus invites the Pharisees today, why don't you also look inside? There are even more to be washed inside. Parang sinasabi ni Jesus sa mga pariseyo, at sa atin din lahat ngayong araw na ito. Pagkatapos ninyong linisin lahat ang inyong mga kamay, ang inyong damit, ang inyong mga gagamitin sa bahay, bakit hindi rin tingnan ang kalooban at ang puso? At diyan may makikita tayong mas marami pang dapat hugasan, dapat linisin, dapat baguhin. That is why Jesus was asking the Pharisees, ah, you are so experts ah, in washing your hands, you have become already experts in cleaning your house and your things, then now, look into your hearts. Wash from your hearts evil thoughts. Theft, murder, adultery, greed, deceit, arrogance. These are the things that now you need to focus and wash your hearts from. Kaya mga kapatid, ang paalala ni Jesus sa atin ngayong araw na ito ay tunay nga na may katotohanan. Huwag lamang matutunan maglinis ng kamay at ng kapaligiran natin at ng mga bagay-bagay. Sana ngayong araw, tingnan din ang kalooban. Linisin naman ng kalooban. 
sapagkat diyan, mas marami pa tayong makikitang dapat linisin. In this time of pandemic, my dear brothers and sisters, we have seen the emergence of the coronavirus and many other viruses that may affect our bodies. But there are also deeper viruses that came out. And we need also to focus ourselves on cleansing these inner viruses that we have. Ngayong panahon ng pandemya na ito, hindi lamang natin nakita ang coronavirus, mas marami pang virus ang nakita natin na nanggagaling sa puso, galing sa kalooban ng isang tao. The virus of corruption and greed. We may have already cleansed our lives from the coronavirus maybe a year or two after now. But don't you think that it is also important for us to cleanse our country of corruption? Baka nalampasan natin ng coronavirus Pero ganun pa rin ang pamamalakad. Ganun pa rin ang korupsyon. Ganun pa rin ang pagiging ganid, makasarili ng mga tao. Baka mas mahalagang linisin natin din, hindi lang ang coronavirus, kundi ang mga virus na ito na nagpapahirap sa bawat isa sa atin. We have seen the virus of inequality. Richer countries have access to more vaccines and poorer countries are scrambling to get vaccines, leftover vaccines. We have seen inequality even in healthcare. Kapag mayaman, May kwarto, malaking kwarto sa ospital. Pag may pambayad, mas natutugunan, mas natutuunan ng pansin. Pero kapag mahirap, hirap na hirap ding humanap ng ospital. We have seen in our healthcare system that our medical workers, our healthcare frontliners, are having a hard time getting their pay. Paano kaya nangyari ito na ang mga doktor natin, ang mga nurses, ang mga frontliners sa ospital, nagmamakaawa pa silang bayaran sila? Don't you think that this is even a worse virus than the coronavirus? Na ang mga doktor natin, mga nurse, halos itaya ang buhay nila para alagaan tayo tapos magmamakaawa pa sila sa kanilang pay sa kanilang sweldo hindi ba ito ay dapat virus din na linisin natin at sana ay maalis natin sa ating bayan my dear brothers and sisters this is the invitation of Jesus to all of us. After washing our hands, after purifying all our things and disinfecting all our things at home, can we not also wash our hearts from greed? Can we not also cleanse our minds from lies and fake news? Can we not also stop our hands from corruption? Can we not also stop our mouths from bad words, from cursing, from blasphemy? And can we not get rid 
this country of evil. Palalimin natin ang paglilinis, paghuhugas natin. Baka mas kailangan natin ito sa panahon natin ngayon. We have become so familiar with health protocols, but our first reading today from the book of Deuteronomy reminds us, do not only become familiar with decrees and commands of people, but become also familiar with God's commandments. Hear, listen, and follow the commandments of God. Alam ko, palagi nating naririnig ang salitang health protocols. Napakahigpit natin sa ganyan. Kahit dito kami sa Manila Cathedral, pagpasok mo, iche-check ang temperature, kukunin ang iyong personal details for contact tracing, bawat estasyon ay may alkohol, bago umupo, mag-aalkohol, bago magkomunyon, mag-aalkohol, Napakahigpit natin sa health protocols. Can we also observe God's protocols? We are already familiar with health protocols. Can we also become familiar with God's protocols, God's commandments, God's word? This is the invitation of Jesus today. And even in our second reading, from the letter of St. James, the Apostle James reminds us also of this, that we, meet, we become doers of the Word and not only hearers of the Word. And that following God's religion is to care for orphans, to care for widows, to care for those who are in need. My dear brothers and sisters, we have already become experts in washing hands like the Pharisees and the scribes. We have bought different purifiers, disinfectants. I think they have earned from this industry. We have become experts in this. But Jesus invites us also to take a deeper and closer look into our hearts. Maybe at this time, we need now to focus on washing our hearts, cleansing our minds, even cleansing this country from evil, getting rid of not only coronavirus, getting rid of other viruses, deeper viruses that infect our country. In this celebration of the Mass, we ask the Lord Jesus to cleanse us, to wash our hearts, cleanse our minds, and be reminded that listening to God's Word is also a way of washing away our sins. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the, On the third day, day he, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The gift of faith is shown in our actions. True religion is sincere, generous, and merciful. May these intercessions we make for others strengthen the quality of faith in action. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of compassion and fidelity throughout the Universal Church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For strong and effective solutions to alcohol and drug abuse in our society, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For single parents and their children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women of our community who serve others like St. Vincent de Paul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who sleep in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions for the intentions offered in this Mass. And let us also specially pray today for those who are, for those who are sick, especially of COVID-19, and also for our healthcare workers and other frontliners. Merciful Lord, hear the prayers of a people honoring you not only with lip service but with deeds of faithful love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, He humbled Himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, He freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, He gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep 
in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank all of you for uh, joining us in this celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Even if uh, we cannot still gather physically in our churches, but still every Sunday is a time for us to gather as one family, as one community, to thank the Lord for His blessings, to ask the Lord for His protection, and Today, we ask the Lord to wash us, to wash us and cleanse our hearts, to wash and cleanse our country. We also thank all of you for sending their donations, their love offerings to the Manila Cathedral, and also for those who have sent their uh, mass intentions. We are praying for you and your intentions, and may the Lord continue to bless you also. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of all consolation 
order your days in His peace and grant you the gifts of His blessing now and forever. Amen. May He free you always from every distress, from every sickness, and from every danger, and confirm your hearts in His love now and forever. Amen. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Lord, we give our yes.